So they want to have their kids grow up in a very extraordinary. And he, and after he become a legal, able to get a legal job, he was a teacher in a, a high school, a girls' school, as an ethics teacher. But he didn't believe in the institution uh, education, so he was experimenting with the homeschooling. So. Um, uh, basically, uh, it was like a little master plan that he built his first 70 square meter and then they add two more, it's like almost master plan. But also this small house, they wanted to have a more, uh, uh, like almost like a home school, so they, maybe their neighbor kids can also use it, hopefully they build more and more. Uh, we only were able to build as we designed first one, but we added the container, we found, we found exactly the same size. So um, anyway, uh, it's still there, it's in this artist village. Um, it's, this is the second phase, first phase, and they're using this uh, sort of unused, uh, somebody else owns it, but uh, the empty lot as their uh, crazy garden. And then uh, these are some other attempts, artist house, and this was a house with a little uh, lodge, in lodging bed and breakfast facility as a way to sort of uh, use it as a, sort of like an extended family, uh, uh, using the guest uh, as almost like a temporary family experiment. Anyway, um, so he was willing, willing to use his living room as like an almost public uh, library. Anyway, but um, these are very rare people in Korea who's able to hire architect to do a custom-made uh, house designed by architect like us. That would be, which would be probably the worst thing you can do with the money in terms of chetek including your wealth because it's you know the best way to increase easiest way is a housing a housing obviously these apartment uh, what I call Hilbazheimer or stretched Hilbazheimers so uh, we call this sort of a chicken coop uh, sort of a living situation uh, you know now these chickens are treated ethically that uh, until they get killed is much better treated than this but uh, people and also this was a study about the rat that has a very simple environment and then has much more richer three-dimensional environment how the brain cells uh, develops. So obviously uh, I think it's a lot of social problem came from this type of apartment. Okay. How much? Slow. Speak slowly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to do is sort of uh, this combine these two notion. The systematic is uh, actually the mode, not a goal. And then the heterogeneity is uh, actually is more has to do with the value, diversity. Um, so we're trying to approach this systematic somehow, uh, sort of invent a formula um, to uh, actually people can use, maybe the housing bureau can kind of use it as a uh, sort of mass, when they mass produce it, without, uh, without uh, creating this homogeneous condition. But the heterogeneity has been sort of approached in a very superficial, instant way. But we actually create real difference, maybe spatial difference. So this kind of type of situation, uh, basically, I call it this uh, domino matrix. And we try to just invent, it was almost a conceptual way to sort of uh, invent a platform. Uh, it's almost like a you know, go game, Paduk. Uh, you have this platform, and then you can play the game, but maybe you can change the grid and you can start to play different grip and maybe like what um, uh, Pak chan uh, was talking about the Yuhyu Gongan or some other possibilities uh, um, may, maybe could come out and sometimes it just uh, we try to open up some pos I mean just improve some light conditions or ventilation conditions things like that so a lot of them are actually actual project and some I should show you uh, um, some of the examples. So, and, and this is about kind of creating a space, but also some sort of like a mental uh, sort of a uh, sort of decompression uh, as well. So uh, this was, the, I mean, a lot of these projects are official because it gives us a sort of a freedom. Uh, we haven't tackled into the apartment handy yet because which has a real problem, but uh, hopefully we're, we've been doing that uh, to sort of have these kind of studies can in fact uh, this color represents different co uh, sort of a types, so it's quite diverse inside. Although the the blunt is, I mean, the shape is quite simple. Actually, you have um, ten different, uh, no, actually fifteen apartments among four, four, thirty-five of them has actually their own private gardens. And um, this one is a simple office, and this was a uh, what we talked about. Few people, uh, horizontal meets vertical. In Seoul, uh, also a lot of Asian conditions have this sort of a wall of 60 meter blue bar apartment and then it's kind of confronted by the smaller scale substances and somehow we thought uh, maybe there's some, some sort of uh, scale could be mediated so that it's large scale but it also has uh, have some intimate uh, sort of uh, dimension to it. 
And these are all uh, small balconies, and we kind of plant the 23 different uh, trees. And actually, uh, a lot of it is we're showing that it's although we occupy a building, actually we create more land, uh, you mean considering the balcony as a land, and uh, actually uh, you have a, a water uh, irrigation to plant things there. And this was the largest thing. Of course, these are quite luxurious development, but we are hoping to have a lot of jaktums, uh copies, and maybe Actually, we, uh, we start to see that and we're quite happy with it. And this was the largest thing we did, and last year we built it. And it's uh, quite a monster, but basically there are 15 different uh, sort of a small, uh, intimate spaces that you act. And initially, this was a very classic case that we were asked to design this only dress up this facade so that they can sell more uh, money with the money because the location is the most expensive spot in Seoul, probably in Korea. So we said, you know, maybe uh, that was our uh, sort of way to uh, um, explore this heterogeneous condition that uh, maybe you can start to imagine different houses with their uh, own bridge in internally or house with a garden. We call it like a two-story, these are the uh, duplex has a uh, stairs and two-story suburban house stacked up with a uh, Star Trek uh, bridge uh, houses somehow and we, I mean, also, all, especially these areas are quite, uh, you know, affluent, and usually these type of towers kind of uh, promote this very, very kind of individualistic, maybe if not lonely, uh, sort of a space, because you only get to see very far away, but at least you get to see the neighbor uh, so who's uh, next to you. But also, it was kind of out of maybe slight guilt that, you know, more building it gets, actually building gets more simpler nowadays, and that's how architect makes money. But we thought maybe what if the building size and complexity is proportional to um, the size, and we, so we end up pro producing 49 different typologies, and actually we're on the verge of bankruptcy. It's, it's a true story. And then actually the client was generous enough to pay us more money to finish it. And that's why, and then at the end, we're stuck with this uh, uh, quite uh, larger size than um, uh, what I hoped for my office was. And luckily we shrunk a little bit. And this was another attempt, and it's almost complete now, also in Seoul. And this was basically, we call it bundle. It's also it, it's a structure concept. And uh, this one was a sort of, for us, it was an accomplishment because it actually stood out as a form, urban form, almost sculpturally. But idea was to create the, using the structural sort of a logic that we pull apart as much as possible so that the elevator tower uh, in actually the apartment, uh, the office cells in this case, has a sort of a shared uh, sort of a common space with the uh, bridges and balconies and some gardens and so on. And this is very impossible to do. And uh, somehow we managed to uh, sell that uh, because it's all about ratio between net to gross. And so it's actually, it's not complete, but it's almost look like that. And actually there'll be a garden and those 33 bridges will be uh, spread out. At least people will interact hopefully and maybe get out, go out to smoke because <laughs> this is a place for live and work. And also tower usually is a kind of shameless and phallic and it looks like a big middle <coughs> finger usually, but <laughs> this has uh, also a double sort of a character so that it changes. Uh, <laughs> Brie is a friendliness when the Asian take picture of like a victory, so it actually works as a some sort of a marker. So um, we're quite amused by uh, what it does. And this one was actually, it was more like almost, a fi I mean, totally fictional uh, opportunity that we were confronted. It was in between those two towers when we were designing those two towers, putting together, you know, dealing with the bureaucracy and technical drawings. We are asked to imagine uh, how people will live in 20 years. And uh, it was for the exhibition about how people's going to live in uh, year 2026. So it was called Seoul Commune. And it was almost become, the project almost become like a depository of all the rejected ideas to uh, when we try to do these real towers. And um, so it looks like this. It's, um, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, I hope Rick uh, does, uh, doesn't give you a nightmare. <laughs> um, one of the ideas.